All right, so write this down. In all areas of life, taking action is the key to success. In all areas of life, taking action is the key to success, all right? Take action or accept the results, all right? If you don't take action, you have to accept the results of not taking action. Most people who fail to achieve what they want fail for lack of action. The ability to take action is the skill that ultimately separates the winners from the losers in the game of life, or more importantly, in the game of real estate. So I wrote this question down. What is not taking action costing me? Because it's amazing to me how with all the opportunities that we have that are in front of us, with the changing market, with the, we know what to say, we know how to say it, we're good at all of this. We know our scripts and dialogues. We work on our statistics. We work on what's going on. What does not taking action cost you? So I'm gonna play a numbers game here. I'm working on some numbers and you guys could write these numbers down and we could figure this out together. And I'd like you to write down what on a piece of paper and circle it, nobody gets the copy, okay? Nobody copy. What do you think it's costing you for not doing your job at the highest level? Is it $20,000 a year? Is it $50,000 a year? Is it a couple hundred thousand dollars a year? What do you think it is? Okay, so write that down, write that number down, circle it and cover it so nobody can copy from you. All right. So I can't tell by this number how many people are here. Robert, can you see how many people 40. are in? Good. Okay, thanks. So we have 40 people. So about, God knows how many we invite to this thing. We certainly have 185 people that are possible in the company. Some people are doing rather well. Some people could use a little bit of help. I'm gonna walk through these numbers. What is not taking action costing me? So, Let's talk about past client sphere first. We can talk about the different categories. So past client sphere, and what I'd like you to do is write down the number of people you have in your past client and sphere base. I mean, the, the real number, they know you and you know them, okay? Write that number down. If, if you don't know what it is and you're fairly new in the business, I always use, um, 150 people. I figure if a person who's in their mid to late uh, to, to early 30s, if they were to get married, they probably would have 75 couples to invite, and that would be about 150 people. So I, I use for somebody that doesn't have anybody 150. If you know your number, write down your number, okay? So let's say you have that 150 people in your database. They know you, you know them. You have, mail, you have a mailing address to their home uh, or where they reside. You have email addresses and you have um, cell phone numbers, all right? You email them weekly, you snail mail them monthly and you call every other month. That's your job. Email weekly, snail mail monthly, and call them every other month, all right? That's the job. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you do that at a high level on a regular basis, you're gonna get 10% of that business in the next 12 to 14 months, either in direct or indirect transactions. So if it's 150 people and you get 10%, how many transactions should that be in the next 12 months for you? Anybody? 15. 15. Thank you, Rob. Okay. 
So Robert and I can't participate. <laughs> we need other players, all right? So that's 15 transactions. So under past client and sphere and COI, right down to the right of that, 15. All right, because that's what's possible. Here's the deal. If let's say you get eight, you think you got them all. Well, that's not true because there's at least 10% in there. Some of you are good and you could get 15%, but there's at least 10%. So if you're getting seven and there's 15 possible, that means you're leaving eight in the pile. That's just a fact. Write it down and accept it. All right. So that's number one. Uh, so that's the first area. The second area, and this is working in a big way right now, big way, is expireds at the door. You can do expireds at the phone, but I want to talk about expireds at the door. Let's raise the level. We have two or three agents in our company that are getting two or three expireds a month. Some, some are getting more, and they're working at the door, okay? So that's what's going on out there right now. So let's say you go after new expireds and old expireds in a specific area that you can travel back and forth through near your home base and office base. You do five previews a day, five days a week. Now, don't stop and say, how I'm going to do five and I'm going to do this. Just people do it. So what the heck, right? You can too. Five a day, five days a week. So if you have 240 work days and you do five pre, uh, going to the expired and knocking on the door a day, you're going to knock on um, 1,200 that you're going to go see in the next 12 months. You guys with me on this? Robert, check my math, make sure I'm doing this right. All right. So you've gone to see 1,200 people. If you go to, if you know the scripts and dialogue and you know them at a really high level and you physically go see and talk to 1,200 people, you're going to find about 30% home. That's just the statistics. When 30% home, that means you're gonna be able to talk to 360 people. And of the 360 people that you talk to about being expired, how many of those do you think you could list? Guesstimate. Anybody? Tess, Fred, Armin, how many of, if you, if you went and knew the objection handlers really well, and you saw 360, over the next 12 months, how many of those could you list? Give me a number anyway. At least 5%, so that would be 18 deals. Okay, so at least 5%, anyone more? No? Okay, so let's go, let's hit 18 deals. Of the 18 deals, how many of those will sell? Tess, do you think? Well, one's five percent, so that would be at least 10. Okay, so let's, let's say that we have 18 deals and probably 10 will actually close. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let's talk about previewing property because you know I would. Preview five houses a day, five days a week. That's another 1,200 homes that you're going to see. Okay, five houses a day. Um, times um, five. five, 240 days is 1,200 homes in the next 12 months. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Has there ever been a time when you were previewing property and a buyer stopped you or a seller stopped you and asked you about a house that you were going to see? Has there ever been a time like that in your careers, those of you that have been in the business a while? Hello? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Armin, has that ever happened to you? Sure. Fred, ever happened to you? Oh, he's not talking to me. Uh, oh, Ruth, of course that's happened to you, right? 
and Eddie and Kathy Ashford. That stuff happens to you, right? In the past? Absolutely. Valerie, same thing. It's happened to me when I was in the business. Uh, Alex, that ever happened to you when you were previewing property or showing property? Absolutely. Yes. So that happens. That's why I, that's one of the, the benefits of previewing property. Product knowledge is one. Putting together a deal is another. Okay, so if you saw 1,200 houses, here's the deal. If you saw 1,200 houses, would you run into one or two or three people a month who wanted to buy or sell a house from you that you haven't talked to yet? Would you run into that? Could you do a deal a month from that? Anybody? Yeah. Absolutely. So let's write down from previewing properties is another 12 transactions, one a month. Now, if you saw 1,200 houses over the last 12, over the next 12 months, how well would you know the market? Very well. 1,200 in, in, the next, in the next 12 months, you said, not in a month. No, in 12 months. Oh, okay. No, no, in the next 12 months. So you'd see, you'd, you, could you do a, Valor, a Valerie, if you saw 1,200 houses previewing property, could you do a deal a month just off of that activity? Easily. Absolutely, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So... Now, what I want you to do is I want you to door knock 10 houses around each one of these activities. So if you went and saw 1,200 expires and you door knock 10 around each one, that would be 12,000 properties you door knocked. And if you went and door knocked 10 houses around each preview, that would be another. 12,000 houses. So that means you would door knock 24,000 houses in the next few months. Now, if you did 24,000 houses in the next four months, how many deals could you do if you door knocked out? Give me a number. Could you do one deal a month, two deals a month, three deals a month, four deals a month? Just on the 24, not the other stuff. Anyone? Two. Two a month. Tess, you, you actually believe if you knock 24,000 doors, you could do two a month. Yeah. I believe you can too. I, could, I believe you do more. But okay. So that's another 24 transactions. Okay. COI, we said 15 deals. Expires, we said 18 deals. Uh, excuse me, 10 deals, right? Yeah. 10 deals, sorry. So that's 25 deals. Previewing property, we said uh, 12 deals and door knocking 24. So 69, so that's 61 transactions. Everybody with me? Did you guys write that down? Now, our gross commission today is about 15 to $18,000 a deal. So if you take 15,000, and you multiply that times 61 transactions, that comes up to $915,000. I believe, I believe if you do those activities that you could earn close to $900,000. Certainly if it's $10,000 a deal, you're gonna earn somewhere around $600,000. So here's the question. I think the low end of this conversation is 600,000. Compare that number to how much you think you lose by not doing what you're supposed to be doing. What's your numbers? Anybody wanna share? Let's say Neil, okay, so let's just play this. I okay. mean, you're talking about a projection that you are 100% committed to this. So my question would be, there are days when, okay, you slack out, you have an appointment, you got off track, 
So for doing 600, realistically, the way you're saying, at least a minimum of 400,000. Well, what, what you're saying is- You're not what, 100% what, committed. You what, what, what you're, yeah, what you're saying, Tess, is the thing that is my- Let's say- Okay, I lost you again. Don't know what the hell Your voice. Talking. Uh, we lost you again. And nobody can make We can't hear you. Okay. And if I'm a third wrong. We cannot hear you, Neil. Is that better? No. Sorry. What I was saying, Tess, is if what... Robert, tell him. Technology issue. Hold on. Sure. Perfect. Hold on. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Somebody guys. hold. The, somebody hold the antenna. <laughs> <laughs> here, here it is. I got a lightning rod right here. Okay. Ah. Uh, so the point, Tess, is that almost no one's going to do 100% of any of no, the things that we talked about. That's the about reality here. of it. Right. That, that is the reality. But if somebody was really focused and, you know, like any one of maybe the 100 people I've interviewed over the last two years, if they were to do this, what's possible? And in some cases, they may, they may be doing this. I think this program is worth somewhere between four and five hundred thousand dollars a year. Yes. Every single one of you, no exceptions. Some will make more money. Some might wait a little bit less, but that's that's what's going on out here, you guys. Okay. Preview property. Door knock and phone canvas expired. Know what to say and how to say it at a really high level. Door knock 10 around each one is 24,000 24, properties. Nobody does $24,000. That's the point of 24,000 houses. That's the point. No one's really working their tushes off. You want $450,000, $500,000? This plan will get it for you. I think you should start now. What do you think? I just started. <laughs> I love it. Okay, that so knock, that. knock expi Neil. Question: uh, Go, do, you, Go ahead. do you have a prefer preference knocking knocking the expired first or calling first? Doesn't matter. Well, I I think my competition, my cycle babble on this, is most people are not practiced enough to call expired on the phone, uh, and I'm saying all of you are going to be practiced enough. But if they're not practiced enough, they're sure the hell aren't going to go door knock. So you get what I'm saying? So I believe you'll be by yourself out there door knocking expired. And so I want to ask the question, Neil, uh -huh. about the expired. Uh -huh. and, and, and Robert was telling this, that there's very few in our company that actually get expired listings. However... I mean, I don't know about that, but I'm hearing this is just my my concept and my feedback. It seemed to me that there are more expires when you actually knock on the door. Am I right? What do you that? mean? What do you mean more expired? Like meaning close, close. I mean, getting listings of expires when they are more at the door as opposed to uh, calling. Because I, I mean... From going back, this is just my mentality right now being that, you know, people have, sellers have the concept that we're still in that high market. So they're listing their property at a higher pricing. However, they get agents who are accepting the fact that they could still list at a higher price, but the reality of it is not. So they go into expires. So going back to that concept that in reference to door knocking, I think the door knocking more 
you get more listings as opposed to calling because I am calling. There's no answer. I mean, in the morning. Um, here's here's I, what's going on. Here, here's what's going on on the call it all right, right now. A lot of our phones are popping up, could be spam or could be whatever. Okay. A lot of them. And there are some tricks to get around it. We're working on those constantly. Um, they set something up for me just recently. We're doing something for Noel to see if that works. A couple of the agents in the office are talking about some things that they're doing. So we're working on that stuff as we speak. But there is absolutely no spam when you knock on a door. None. Zero. It ain't there. So until we get this phone numbers done, let's knock on doors. Yeah. You, get, you, you understand my point? Yes. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to completely solve the, the, the spam problem. We're working on it. We are making some headway, but I guarantee you, if you're door knocking, you don't have that problem. Yes. Okay. So, um, how much did you lose for not taking action at this level in the first and second quarter so far? What got in the way? Are you asking Part of what? Me? Are you asking me? No, it's a general question. Did you not think it would work? The door knock? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm talking to everybody. Yes, I'm just looking at that. I'm not talking about just that. I'm just talking about the, the program works. Tess, you heard me talk about this yeah. for years. For years, I've been talking about this. Now, during COVID, we couldn't do all of it. So we backed off of it. But we can now. And we should really put the pedal to the metal and take advantage of it. Because the one thing that most of you know are what to say and how to say it. And that has been a problem, okay? But you do know how to do it. So let's, let's crank it up. Let's really just, we have the rest of June, which there's still two plus weeks left. And I told you June was kind of a bonus month. And then we can plow into the balance of next year and really run through the finish line. And it doesn't um, matter how much you made so far this year. You can make big money in the next uh, half of the year. Neil, I have a question. Uh -huh. Sure. Okay. Um, so if you go to an expired and it's an old expired or even a new expired, and you go to your the neighbor next door. What do we say? Oh, I visited your neighbor who was house. What what's the what's new and what what's the script for that? That's a great question. First of all, and, and what you started to say is what's the new script for that, right? Uh, but, well, kind of. <laughs> well, there is no there is no new script because the person never even heard the old script. Okay. Well, right. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> what's the script for? talking about old no inspired. we just walk we uh, I'm, I'm looking at property in the neighborhood and you go to uh hold on i have it right in front of me on my screen and i go to over here um huh, i closed it now it's not open right, here it goes okay so in rapid fire role play, it is point number 32. And the script sounds every bit like this. It sounds, um, hey, Valerie, it's Neil Schwartz, your real estate agent from Century 21 Masters. How are you doing today? I'm Valerie, good. that's great. I'm so glad I got you. Huh? I'm, I'm door knocking around the area, telling clients and friends about some important changes in the marketplace. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Our market's changing. Interest rates just topped five, almost 6% for the first time in three years, and closed sales are the, are the lowest they've been in almost two years. Let me ask you, were, were you aware that was going on? Uh, no, no, not no. really. We know when this trend continues, the prices are going to soften. So I was wondering, who do you know that might want to take advantage of this changing market? 24,000 times, Valerie. It will work 24,000 <laughs> times. I promise you, 24,000 times. 
no one is going to give you any pushback on that script. Okay. okay? I, I believe you. Okay. Oh, no, I agree. All right. Go get them. Okay. All right. Good stuff. And Other excuse questions? me, Neil, what materials sure. do you bring with you when you go door knocking? Any recommendation? Um, this is Yukiko, right? Oh. No? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So what would I take? Yeah. Personally, I would just take a clipboard to write down the name and phone number of anybody that was interested in talking to me. I wouldn't necessarily leave anything. Can I tell you why? Yes, please. Because when I have to have something to go out and door knock, there's a decent chance I won't have it prepared. And so therefore I won't go. Interesting? Mm -hmm. I can attest to that. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, anything that can stop me from prospecting will. So if I normally take out, a, you know, a hundred papers with me um, and they're not ready, I'm going to prepare them or I'm going to be upset at somebody who is supposed to prepare them or I'm, you know, I'm not going to go and I'll stay on the phones and I'll do something different. So I would take a business card. I would take maybe an oversized business card. If you feel you have to have something, just have something that talks about, uh, you know, we put these out to you guys um, a few weeks ago about um, what the interest rate is costing us in terms of higher payments and our purchasing power. You know, that's kind of an interesting pass out. But I wouldn't get any more complicated than that. And I would use the same thing 24,000 times, okay? See, this is where we think we have to change, but you use the same script 24,000 times. You pass out the same piece of paper 24,000 times because you're not going to the same people again. This is all 24,000 new people because you go to 10 around each new expired and each new uh, preview. You guys get that? Anybody care? Do I feel passionate about this? I'm telling you, this works. Yes. This really does work. Okay. Questions? Anybody? Neil. So, go ahead. I I ran. I was knocking this morning. I ran into one expired. Mm -hmm. I I took my. Where am I? Uh, I Who's this, Jake? This is Jake. Yeah, I took my yeah. little clipboard, and a right? Little postcard, and okay. and uh, they're really there. I didn't know he was expired, so I'm I'm going to go back and see him later. Um, he doesn't want to move, but I'll go back and see him. Uh, they're they're really out there, expired. So let me throw something at you, Jake. Guy puts his so. He goes to, you go to him and he says, yeah, I really, I decided not to sell, right? That kind of what he said? Yes. Okay. Jake, have you ever sold a house before? Did you ever put it on the market and sold one at any yes. time in your life? Yes. Okay. Is it fun? <laughs> no fun at all. No fun at all. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever sold a home, it is a pain in the tush. You have to keep the house straight. You have to keep it nice. I mean, look, I know every one of you is, it has a perfect house and perfect clean house. But, you know, when people come over and they're going to see it this afternoon, you want to go in, you want to wipe the counters down, you want to make sure there's no water uh, on, the, on the bathroom, you want to make sure that the toothpaste isn't open, all that kind of stuff. It's a pain in the touch. Nobody puts their house on the market for the fun of it. No one. They're bullshitting you. OK, so when you first put your house on the market, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, where were you going to? Because they were going to do something. OK, now maybe things changed. I get that. But there was something. Find it. Resurrect right. that feeling. It's like, you know, when you first put the home on the market, where were you going to? Well, I was going to uh, Florida. Florida. 
wow, was it a business move or are you retiring? Uh, I'm kind of retiring. Retiring? So uh, how did you choose Florida? Of all the places on the planet you could have chosen, how did you choose Florida? My daughter lives down there. Well, your daughter lives down there. She got a boy. They have children. Yeah. Boys and girls. One boy, one girl. How old are they? Eight, uh, they're uh, eight and nine years old. Wow. So you're going to Florida to be with your grandkids and they're eight and nine years old. That must be exciting for you guys. You probably can't even wait to get there. Do you get what I'm saying, everybody? Get them back on track. If you're not doing it at that level, don't work expires. Okay? I'm telling you, don't work them. Wasting your time. Go do something else. All right. I know you guys think I'm mean, but I'm really not. I'm the straight guy in this Robert Neal thing. Right? That is true. Yeah. Laurel and Hardy. And I'm Laurel and Robert's Hardy. He gets yeah. more laughs than I do. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, questions on what we covered. Everybody gets it? Why do you get quiet when I do this? Is it because you, you look at it and say, wow, this is like a blinding flash of the obvious. I could do this. If I were to do this, I could do this and make the money I need to make. What stops us? I want to say, I think it's a, a great plan. Thank you for laying it out for us, Neil. Uh, and um, now I think it just comes down for us to just um, get organized with our schedule so we could actually do the action and put it all okay. to work. And Cynthia, congratulations. Thank you for that. And congratulations on your first listing with the company. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Sorry. Good stuff. See? Well, if, if people seem overwhelmed with all of this, maybe they should lay it out to where this week I'm going to start with calling my past clients. Next week I'm going to call my past clients and add um, door knocking expires or or whatever. Just keep keep improving it each week, but don't try to jump in and do these mega days all at once because you don't have the endurance but if you do little bits every day baby steps will get us there right well that's true and i get that and so what i would recommend is instead of going and seeing five expires and and previewing five properties and going and door knocking 10 around each one just cut them back a little bit instead of a five five ten make it a three three five or a two, two, seven. Make it your number. It doesn't have to be my number, okay? There's no magic in the number I chose. I just think they're doable every day, 240 days a year. Think about that, 240 days a year, and you did that, and you got four or $500,000 for your, for your family. <clears throat> Would anybody really be pissed at me? Would you? No. Good. Because I'm an amiable. I don't want to get you something that you're mad at me for. All right. Other questions? Nothing. Does this only work, Neil, if you do all of it? Or could you commit to one of them? And well, still get the same results. So let me well, give you an example. If you're so, closing less than 12 deals a year and all you did was focus on obviously doing the basics of knowing the scripts, knowing what to say, and just previewing property, five homes a day, five days a week, could you still, and that's what you did, could you generate a deal a month or is this all kind of no. related together? Well, okay, that's a great question, and, and it's asked, you asked it very well. The answer is all of these stand on their own separately. However, the scripts and dialogues and learning those is kind of a beginning step. Remember, I tell everyone, 
the beginning steps are learn the scripts and dialogues, what to say, how to say it, and preview property. Those are the two main things. So if you did those two things and worked your past client and sphere base, you'd make a decent living. Decent living. You'd make, what's that, 20, 25 transactions? Not bad. Not bad at all. It's two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So yes, Robert, that would work. Okay, absolutely. But you have to learn the scripts. You have to preview property, and uh, and then do one of the rest of them, and that'll get you some good business. And if you did two, oh man. All right, good stuff. Any other questions? Okay, that's it. That's it. We have to post uh, the thing again from 168 hours last week. I think I did it. Did I do it? I think I did, I did it Tuesday last week. Tuesday of last week. So let's post that again and see if anybody and everybody did what they agreed to do in the 168 hours. And for those of you that weren't here, the 168 hours is how many hours you have in a week. And everyone has the same 168. Isn't that interesting? So if you could post that, Robert, that'd be great. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording. If anybody wants to talk to me about this later, um...